Hello and welcome. This is Chrisanne and I'm coming at you from Elemental Energies with Chrisanne. Today we are going to be making these super cute Christmas ornaments that I came up with. Because I have paper, I want to use it. So this is using double-sided paper. That's kind of key for this project. This is using double-sided paper, stickers, die cuts, book page, um, some leftover gems, um, and then different things that I've stamped and created and then some ribbon or twine or whatever it is that you choose to use. I'm using my different uh, punches here, but all this is, believe it or not, it's one sheet from this Park Lane Firelight. This was last year's Christmas paper. Yeah, my hands are filthy. <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs> this is last year's Christmas paper, Park Lane. This is Joanne's. So I took one sheet, cut it in half, and I got two. So these are all double-sided. And these are decent heavyweight. If you don't have double-sided paper or heavyweight paper, take two sheets of 12 by 12 or eight and a half by 11 paper and glue them back to back. You can use a glue stick to glue them back to back. That will give you double-sided paper and it will make it a little bit more heavier weight. So keep that in mind, super easy fix. In this case, I have this double-sided paper pack and it's just been sitting there looking pretty and I thought you know what I am all about using my stash using what I have using up all of these beautiful papers that are within my stash that I have let's use them so this is what I came up with I created this to be the exact size of a credit card uh, this is standard within the United States. So you can just use one of your credit cards just to double check that it fits. So this pocket was created just by folding this over. This is a Christmas ornament gift card holder. So you don't really have to make a card if you don't want to. You can just give this. So this pocket is the right size to just put a gift card in if it's one of those credit card gift cards. If it's a paper gift card, you can fold it up to fit it in here too, because it's a pocket. So let's move these out of the way. And what I have is this sheet. Now in this pack, it says it's six by eight. Now this also has this little thing here at the top, this perforated piece. I'm actually gonna cut that off. But before I do, this is directional two-sided paper. If I were to fold it like this, now my Christmas trees are upside down to create my pocket. So in this case, I am going to fold this up. I am not using a scoreboard. Not everybody has a scoreboard. I do, but in this case, let's just grab my bone folder, get a really nice crease. Plus my hands are filthy. They'll leave ink everywhere. And then I'm gonna grab my paper cutter and I am going to trim this top off, that little perforated thing. For this project, I don't need this. I can save it, I can put it in my bucket with all my strips, and I'll use it later. Now remember that, oh, <laughs> let me just finish. Hold on, there, okay. Talking instead of doing. So in this, I know this is six by eight inches. So I need to cut this three in order to get it perfectly in half. So at the three inch mark, there we go. Now I have two. See how this is coming along super, super, super easily. Next thing I wanna do is I like to round 
my edges. Let me bring this over here so you can see it. I rounded these and I did these like a tag. So round that one, round that one, round that at the bottom, come over here. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna round the pocket corners and then the very bottom. Does everybody else's hands get just covered in ink constantly? <laughs> I know, mine just get covered. And then at the very top, I want it to look like a tag. You don't have to do this. I like tags. You can round this if you want. I'm doing mine tag shape. So there, I have that. Next thing I want to do, this is like point six five inches this teeny tiny circle punch that I have and I am going to do the notch hole right here approximately in the middle no right or wrong there next thing I wanted to do I like to ink everything I like to ink the edges in this case I am not doing a brown ink. If you want to, please do, please go ahead. I actually have a red and my red is lumberjack plaid that I'm doing because I wanted to give this a little bit of a Christmas feel, holiday feel. So I'm gonna come in and get that. somewhat delicate. I do like to be heavy handed with my inking. I don't need to be with this. I still am. I don't need to come all the way down, but I'm just going to get that right there. Flip it over. Let's get this side. This is somewhat darker paper. You're not going to see it absolutely everywhere. But there's the hint of it there. So that's that. Let's put that aside and let's finish this one. That tiny little notch hole. Not necessary, but I have it. Let's use it. I thought it was cute. Oh, and that teeny, teeny, tiny one I got at Joanne. I mean, I'm sorry, I got at um, Hobby Lobby. I get my craft supplies at Hobby Lobby, Joanne's, Michael's, Timu, Amazon, and wherever else, you know, secondhand shops, yard sales, my local dump, and a lot of things I'm creating myself as well. We're using die cuts. You know, if you have a die cut machine, fantastic. If you don't have a die cut machine, that's okay. You can buy die cuts. You can fussy cut something out. It's not imperative that you exactly copy mine. And of course my ink is gonna, I mean my, okay, my glue. I'm telling you, I have more trouble with this glue. I love it. I love that it's fine detail and I need the fine detail. And I don't have an earring out here, of course. Oh, there it goes. You do not need a lot. There's that. These come together very, very, very quickly. This is also a really easy project to do with kids. I like to use art glitter glue because I think it's a really nice glue. It sticks, it holds, it does what it needs to do. Okay, so we have this. I have some of these that I have stamped and cut out 
using my Tim Holtz stamps. And then I have some snowflakes that I used, this one didn't cut out very well. I used my die cut machine. And all I'm going to do, let me change out this. Put on my blue. This is Distress Ink Uncharted Mariner. And I'm just going to add some color that snowflake let's add some color to this snowflake and then oh you know what I didn't do let me switch this again so I get all covered in ink let me go back to my lumberjack plaid I wanted to edge these. So these are just something that I stamped out using my Tim Holtz stamps and then fussy cut them. I'm working on a very large project decorating um, brown bags to turn them into gift bags. So check that video out. I have a lot of people that I give to so I have to make holiday things kind of around the clock. See if my glue is going to work. I need to get a new pin for this glue. <laughs> so we'll put that there. Take my, yeah, this. Pain the bottom. Let's clean this out with my pokey tool. I got this at the dollar store. I got it for something else, but you know what? <laughs> this morning I needed it for my glue. I know I should just buy new pins. Let's see if that worked. it didn't work and I need it to work today I spend more time fiddling with this glue than I do crafting naturally all right I can't get it to work this time. Oh, there we go. Okay. And let's just lay that there. That part's done. Let's add some glue to this snowflake. I had got a bunch of Christmas die cuts at Michael's years and years and years and years and years ago on clearance and that's what these are from they are um, Michael's die cuts Christmas die cuts do I have them I have them here somewhere well we'll come across them at some point so anyways that's that part now let's decorate this other side. Now on these, you can see I did a torn piece of book page. That's all this is right here. Up here, I added a strip of book page. And I have my book page right here. So it's this, the salvage edge that I used to create a snow border. Oh, this is perfect. I'm gonna have to fix that one too. 
But this is what I use to create my snow border at the bottom. And I edged it in that blue. So let's do that first. Let's switch this out. Let's put this blue back on. This once again is Uncharted Mariner. And then, um, yeah, we'll do this end at the top. Yep, that's gonna fit. Okay, so let's go and add some glue here. I am pushing down at the bottom, but I am not pushing down at the top because I'm going to come in and tuck this one in. So I'm using, I'm using up a lot of my stuff. Let's let that sit and dry for a second. Let's do this one. Let's tear off this little bit of writing that doesn't need to be there. Let's ink this edge. You know, it's perfectly usable paper. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to add a strip of words behind it. I kind of like this one, how I added the strip of words. I didn't add a strip of words here. You do what works for you. This one I'm going to leave with no words. This one I'm going to leave with words. And you know what? I'm going to edge this one in blue. I did the other one in red, but we'll do this one in blue. It just brings a different level of visual. Visual interest. There's that. Now let's come over here and we will add our snow slash book page. I'm pushing the bottom down and kind of lining that up. I'm not pushing it. I'm not pushing it down right there because I want to come in and tuck this in. You know, how many times have we torn our book pages and just sort of thrown some of these salvage edges away? So let's not. You know, I'm going to let that one dry a second. I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim this one. And I always trim them from the back. Coming around that corner. There. How cute is that? Let's give this one a trim. It's kind of looking red, white, and blue, but that's okay. <laughs> there. That one's adorable, too. And before I forget, let's do the um, hole at the top. I'm just using a regular hole punch. Let's do a hole at the top so I know where to have my placement of my die cuts. So I have a tree here. I have a little bucket full of little die cuts. I have some ornaments here. I have some more words here. You know what? We're going to use a snowflake on one, oops, a snowflake on one and a tree on the other. And now let's pick, I have some stickers that I got at Timu. I could do that. And I could do that. Um, let's use this one. 
I am going to color this one in blue, just like I did the ones on the back. I use really thick white cardstock. I like to do my die cuts in white because then I can come in and I can decorate them and I can match them to what it is that I'm creating. This one is Pine Needles Green Distress Ink. And I kind of striped it. Just kind of pulled my ink down. Kind of did that. Just, I wanted the lines in it. And then I want to switch this again. And I want to come back with that Lumberjack plaid because I want to edge my stickers. These are stickers. This is how I get covered in it, just covered. And this brings a continuity <clears throat> to my piece because I've edged my other stuff in red or blue, but this brings a level of continuity. So let's come in, we're gonna add this tree The tree there. We'll come in and we'll add him right next to the tree. Get him a little bit lower, but right over those book page. This snowflake we can add more up in the air. sticker I'm gonna put right on I know I gotta cut my nails I broke my nails Ugh. we'll put the tree right there now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add glittery little sequins yay so I have this one that kind of sort of reminded me of like snowflakes and I have my little picker I have my little dish that I can shake them in now you can get these either from a friend my friend Bill does a really pretty diamond painting and sometimes he gives me his extras so you can get a friend that does that you can get these at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Timu, just picking them up and I'm just placing them there and it looks like a little bit of bling. It, it just jazzes it right up. And I got this picker thing on Timu. I'm not a fan of pink, but the pink one was cheaper. <laughs> I am a fan of saving money. <laughs> I have a blue one too, but I don't know where the blue one went. So I'm going to let this dry. We're going to do the other side as well. But for now, we're going to come over here. This is why I liked the little tip on this. And once this glue dries, you're not going to see it. This really adds a little extra. Something special. Oh, I missed one. Oh, I missed another one. I missed two. Well, that's not like me. All right, so we are going to let that one dry. We're going to flip this over and I'm going to add some right here. Oh, that's smudged. So let's add stuff to cover my smudge. There. 
There's that. There's the back. There's the front. I'm gonna just put that right over there to dry. Okay, we're gonna do right here. I think I'm gonna use the rest of these up. Let's see. I certainly have plenty. This dish is what they use in um, the diamond painting. There. Ta-da. Super easy. Let's let that dry just a second. Let's get, I'm using this Christmas twine that I got on Timu and it was only a few dollars. It was so cheap. And it's going to get me a lot of projects. So I'm just going to tie a little thing here at the top. And then this way, this is how it's going to hang on the Christmas tree. Or you can attach this to a package if you want. If you're giving another gift and you just want to attach this to the outside. Super simple. This is just a sticker. Some die cuts. Some little gems. Some book page piece of scrapbook paper. I mean, truly, most of us artists have all of these things in our stash. How cute, how simple, how easy. I mean, the most time consuming thing was dealing with my glue. <laughs> typical, typical, typical. Well, I hope this has been fun and easy. You can get just two of these made in less than a half an hour. So if you're going to work with kids and you have like a 45 minute to an hour long class, this is super easy. I, if you're going to work with kids and you want to have double sided paper, but you don't already have it made, take big pieces of 12 by 12 paper, glue, pre glue them together before the kids get there. So you can line it up and then pre trim everything to have these ready. So you have like kits ready. I used to teach kids classes with my mom. So we're used to having a lot of our kits and stuff ready to roll for the kids. So this is a super easy one to do for the big kids and the little kids. So thank you so much for tuning in. Take care and be free.